Hello everyone, my name is Daniel and I'm a programmer and an artist, and today I just wanted to make a video showing some of the new modifiers I've been working on. And then I also wanted to show how you can use some geometry node setups to turn simple curves or edges into simulated ropes um, using a claw simulation, so we'll try to go through that whole process. So what I have here is a single edge, and the result I would like to get is to turn that single edge into a fully modeled 3D rope that's hanging between two points and simulated with a claw simulation. Now the way I would typically do that is with my edge sag modifier, but for the sake of this video I'll just make a simplified edge sag modifier. So we're going to take this edge and we're going to um, split the mesh, split the edges of the mesh, just so that if we had a second edge in here that would become two separate disconnected edges. And then I'm going to turn that into a curve to curve so that we have a curve and then I'm going to resample the curve so that the count is three which will add a vertex in the center of the of each edge and then I want to do an endpoint selection so we'll do um, set position we're gonna pull the middle point down um, we'll set the position selection to be in an endpoint selection and so this is currently moving the two ends. We want to do the middle though, so we'll say not that selection. And then I'll just do an offset on the z-axis to make these sag. Now the edge sag modifier is slightly more complicated than that. It does it in world space rather than object space, and it will offset if one end is higher than the other, but that's just the basic idea of how that works. Then we can just resample this curve. We're going to resample it to four points, which will delete the middle point, and then we can resample that to five. And then once you're happy with sort of the overall shape of the curve, you can set the spline type to Catmull ROM, which will smooth it all out. And then you can set the resolution to be whatever you want it to be. So let's try like three. And then from setting the spline resolution, we can do a curve to mesh. And now we have a mesh again. It needs to be a mesh because we want to assign a vertex group to it. So now we could go to our vertex group and we can make an ends vertex group. But we can see that even if we assign a value to that ends vertex group, if we then come and add a cloth modifier, cloth simulation, we want to go to the shape, to the pins group, and select ends. If we animate it, the whole thing falls because our ends vertex group got deleted when we converted it to a curve essentially. So now that we have this new mesh, um, if we want to reassign that ends vertex group, we actually have to do some trickery because as far as I know there's no way to tell Blender to treat an attribute that you create on a generated mesh as a vertex group. But if you have a vertex group already on your mesh and you set a named attribute with the same name as the vertex group, then it will be the attribute that your setting will be applied to the vertex group. However, we've lost the vertex group because we've generated a mesh. So if we have to join the original geometry back into what we've generated using a boolean, and we want to do a union. Now, for this to work, um, there's a couple things we want to do. First, we should set the position of our input geometry to be somewhere way off away from where we're working. So we could like move it up a thousand meters and that way we're less likely to intersect something and add um, geometry that we don't want. But then there's another problem which is that when we do this boolean operation it doesn't work on edges which is kind of annoying because we would like it to work on edges. So we actually have to extrude the mesh, the edges of our curve that we generated so that there is something for it to work on. Once we've done the boolean operation on the mesh with the edges extruded, we can delete the geometry that's the top from the extrusion. Now once, we, now once we're here and we've done our boolean operation and deleted the edges, the edge looks identical to this output from the curve to mesh, but there's two key differences. One is that the ends attribute, the vertex group, is should be in our geometry and the other is that the um, any overlapping vertices will have gotten merged together by the union boolean operation and that's not great because what we want to do next is store 
um, a named attribute, and we want that to be the ends attribute. So if we set that to one and run this, you can see now nothing moves because we're setting our pins vertex group. But if we just set this to be the vertex neighbors, uh, vertex neighbors, vertex count equals one, which would be the endpoint because this vertex has one neighbor here, but anything in the middle would have two neighbors, one on either side. So if we run that, uh, I might have to change the steps. So if we run that now, we can see we do indeed get the ends penned. However, this vertex got merged together from our two edges. So it's not uh, considered an end by our vertex neighbors uh, check. So what we have to do instead, or what I'm gonna do instead is capture that or sample that off of our curve to mesh here. So we wanna sample an index at sample nearest. So we wanna sample the nearest point and we wanna sample this value to know if that points an endpoint. And we will use that instead as our pins vertex group. And then if you just change the quality steps, sometimes you have to do that to make it realize that you've, if you change something about the mesh and geometry nodes, the cloth simulation doesn't realize that it needs to clear the cache to rebuild it. So you might have to change quality steps or some other setting to tell the cloth simulation that it uh, needs to redo itself. But anyway, sampling then off of that original curve, we can see that our middle pin stays in place. So that's really cool. We have simulation on these curves now, and you can see I have a little bit of wind in here that's blowing them around a little bit. And then we could take that, turn it into a curve, and make it a rope, which I have modifier for. I can do make rope, and then we have a rope here. It looks really nice, so we can make a low poly rope. Then another thing we might want to do is have it be able to collide with objects in the world. Um, you wouldn't want to do that on every rope if you had like a lot of ropes necessarily. Um, if you don't need it, I would not use it because it'll make it a lot slower. But if you have something right up close to the camera, you might want the rope to you know, interact with other things in the scene. And you can do that, but not if your cloth simulation is on a single edge. It actually has to have some thickness. So a way you could add that feature to it is by doing exactly what we did here where we extruded this mesh. Rather than deleting the geometry, we could just leave it in there. And then instead we could capture a named attribute that we call top. And in my make rope modifier, after doing the cloth simulation, then I'm doing the delete like I did here. And initially, uh, if you do it after the class simulation, you can get back to your curve after it's simulated and then turn that curve into a rope. But we might not want to use this whole, we might not want to have this extruded so far out. So let's modify how our extrude works a little bit. Let's, we're extruding the edges. So let's take the position one of the edge vertices and subtract those from each other. So we get the direction of the edge. If we take the cross product of the direction of the edge with um, one on the Z axis, so a vector pointing up and then the direction of the edge, we get a vector that points perpendicular to the edge. If we then normalize that, we'll make its length one. And then if we scale it, or then we can just plug it into the extrude, I guess, and we can set the offset value to be a small value like 0.05. So we just extruded a little bit. And now we have a little ribbon that we can do a class simulation on uh, for our rope. And then after, and we're still capturing that ends, that top, a named attribute. And then after we do the class simulation, so we can see we come in here, we have the uh, our ribbon, and then we can delete be it a top named attribute to get back to our curve, which we then turn into a rope using some solidify and stuff but that's after it's been simulated by the class simulation. And if we go to the class simulation then, and we add, go to collision, collisions, we can see collisions are on. So when we play this back, it should interact with the object in the scene because it's a face rather than a single edge. So those are some cool little tricks for 
uh, how you can generate a rope with geometry nodes, but still do a class simulation on it uh, with some wind and whatever to make your scene have some ropes or and like power lines and stuff like that are a cool way to add a little bit of motion to your scene just to make it feel a little more alive and less static. That and uh, plants with leaves that move. Anyway, so hopefully that was interesting and some useful little tips and tricks about things you can do with class simulations and geometry nodes regarding specifically regarding ropes or wires, things like that. But um, while I'm here, I wanted to show some of the other things I've been working on. This modifier lets you take faces and wherever you put the face, it will try to wrap a rope around whatever object you give it. So this one here, you can see it's wrapping a rope around this part here. If I just make this longer, let's just pull this out here. You can see as long as you put the face th intersecting with the mesh, it will wrap a rope around it. So that's a cool way if you had, say, this, um, say you had these ropes over here and they were hanging between something like this. Well, it doesn't look super realistic because this rope's just coming out of the side of the pole. But if you had one of these and we set the rope wrap modifier to be on the pole, we could move this over here and put it around the pole and then tweak some settings to make the rope a little smaller and change how tightly it was wrapped and stuff like that. And now you can have with a little bit of tweaking, you can make the rope look like it's tied around the pole and we can change the offset to make it be closer and stuff like that. So that's a cool little, those two together, you can make something very quickly that looks uh, attached and has the simulation on it for the physics. And then I've also been working on these modifiers. I've been thinking about like power poles specifically, but probably for other things, I'm trying to make it in a generic way. So you could make maybe like a barbed wire fence as well or um, things like that. But where it's in parts, so the poles are being instanced on a curve. So I could take this curve and move it around and it'll generate a new um, a new set of poles and connect the wires between them. And then the wires are controlled by the mesh. There's points in here hidden in this. If we go to vertex selection mode, the individual points tell the modifier where wires should be connected. And then this one's connecting the wires somewhat evenly. Um, if you turn the randomness up, it'll like cross the wires more. But then I also have one here that just connects anything together as long as it's close enough. It doesn't care about the order of the poles at all. Um, so that makes it a little bit more chaotic. And I'm trying to make all of these where you can like stack the different modifiers in different ways. So this, the wires are on a separate object. That's mainly so that you can run a class sim on it. And it's just the wires if you want to do that. So the way that stack would work is you would you would use this connect strand points or whatever I end up naming it that you give it a collection or an object with some sort of mesh that has individual points marking where wires should connect to and it will try to connect those points together somehow so it makes this network of edges like this and then um, you could use that for different things as well I guess but um, what I'm using it for then is to use the edge sag modifier to give some curve to those edges the edge sag, the edge sag modifier I've updated a bit so that it has some new features previously it just had sag and maybe resolution now it has the sag randomness. So if you increase, so if you set sag randomness to zero, that's how it used to work. Every edge would be sagged the same amount. Um, but sag randomness basically makes it so that each edge gets sagged by a different amount. Um, and the difference will be greater the higher you set the randomness. 
And then you can also solidify it, which creates that ribbon for the collision that I was talking about. So if you want to have do a cloth simulation on it, and you want that cloth simulation to be able to collide with stuff, you would check that solidify option. And otherwise, you would turn it off. And then the it also, the edge tag modifier now can assign endpoints to a vertex group named ends if that vertex group exists on the mesh. Anyway, then you can do a class simulation on it to simulate these swinging. And then the make rope modifier takes either a curve or a ribbon with the, the top named attribute. Um, and it will turn that into a rope like this. And if you turn low poly off, it is a high poly twisted rope. So that would be like one stack of modifiers um, that you could use to make something. And then just to show how that works, I have these pulls here, which I haven't put any points in. But just to show how that works, if I duplicate this point here and move it, you can see we get a wire running along where that point is. So it's connecting this point across each of these poles. And then if we just pull that out a little bit and duplicated it down a few times, you can get some different wires. And then if we went to that set of wires, we have some control over it. We can change how random the sag is. And then we can also, if we increase the randomness of the wire connecting thing, cause some of those wires to get crisscrossed if you want to make it look more chaotic. Uh, and then on this one, the number of wires and the max length don't actually do anything. Other than if you have an additional curve in here, the endpoints of the curves will try to connect to nearby poles. And so that distance controls how close they have to be for that to happen. But then along the curve, they are connected um, in sequence. Anyway, so I'm working on making a new thing that has to do with ropes and wires and vines, maybe things like that. So if you have any thoughts about what would be useful to have in tools related to that sort of stuff, or any comments on what I've shown so far, or any questions, let me know. Um, this is not part of any of my tools yet, but I do have a bunch of tools that I've made for Blender, for geometry nodes, for terrain and building things and all sorts of stuff. So check that out on my website. It's in the description. There's a Discord server that you can join where you can ask questions or um, talk about geometry nodes or other Blender related things. And yeah, that's all I got for this one. Thanks for watching.